assalamu alaikum welcome to my channel before you begin do subscribe to my channel and if i help you do like the video and share it with your friends today we are going to solve cambridge igcse mathematics paper 2 extended variant 21 may june 2020 before we start kindly subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends question number 1 Rectangle A measures 3 by 8 centimeters. Five rectangles congruent to A are joined to make a shape. Work out the perimeter of this shape. This is an interesting question. Let's first find the length. This is 8. This is 8. 8. 8, 8 and 8. How many 8s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 8 times 6, which is 48. Then we will count the 3. This is 3, 3. So we have total 6 trees. And now for the other part. We know that this is 3. So this and this will be 8 minus 3, which is 5. How many we have that? 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, and 4. Remember, I'm counting the whole line together as 5. So this is 5. This whole thing is 5. 5 plus 3 will give us 8. Now we just have to add it together and we will get 86 centimeters. Question number two, find the highest odd number that is a factor of 60 and a factor of 90. Quickly write down the factors. 1 times 60, 2 times 30 will give us 60. 3 times 20, 4 times 15. 5 times 12, 6 times 10. These are all the factors of 60. What you can do is divide, like, divide 60 by 2, you will get 30. Sorry, 60 by 3, you will get 20. You can find the factors like that. Now let's do the same for 90. Remember, if you don't know, you can just use your calculator. 90 divided by 2, you will get 40. 90 divided by 3, 30. 90 divided by 4, you will get a decimal, so we don't use it. We need only whole numbers. 90 divided by 5, 18. 90 divided by 6 is 15. So 6 times 15, 7 will not uh, be used, not 8. And of course, 9 times 10. So which is the highest odd number? As you can see, 15. That is common for both 60 and 90. That's your answer. Question number 3, we have been given a scatter diagram. Mrs. Salaman gives her class two mathematics tests. The scattered diagram shows information about the marks each student scored. So this is test one and this is test two. Question number A, write down the highest marks scored on test one. So we are going to look here. Test one, the highest mark is here, which if you draw the line down, it will be somewhere here. So as you can see, there are five lines between 60 to 70. So each line will be two. This will be 62, 64, and 66. That's the answer. B, write down the type of correlation shown in the scatter diagram. If the mark in test one is increasing, the mark in test two is also increasing. It, the line is going like this. It's a positive correlation.
draw a line of best fit on the scatter diagram, that's part C. We have to try to make a line here that has approximately the same number of crosses on both the side. This is the line of best fit. Part D, Hamish scored a mark of 40 on test one. He was absent for test two. Use your line of best fit to find an estimate for his mark on test two. So he got 40 in test one, which is here. Go up and find the corresponding mark on test two. It's here, so it's 48. If you get anything between 40, 50, any answer between 46 to 50 is acceptable. We got 48. Question four is a probability question. A bag contains blue, red, yellow, and green balls only. A ball is taken from the bag at random. The table shows some information about the probabilities. There are four balls. The yellow probability is missing and we have to complete the table. I'm sure you are aware it's a very easy to mark that the complete probability is always equal to one. So if I add the probability of blue, red, yellow, and green, I will get one. And because I don't have yellow and I want to find it, what I can do is I can subtract from one the other three probabilities that I have. That will give me the yellow probability, which is 0 0.22. Moving forward, Abdul takes a ball at random and replaces it in the bag. He does this 200 times. Find out, find how many times he expects to take a red ball. So what is the relative frequency of red? 0 0.2. We just have to time 0 0.2 by 200. And that will give us 40. So he expects to take a red ball 40 times. Now this is a sequence question. If the nth term of a sequence is 60 minus 8n, find the largest number in this sequence. Let's replace the n with 1. We will get 52. When n is 2, when we are finding the second term, we will get 44. Let's replace it with 3. We will get 36. As you can see, as we go down further um, in the series, our number is decreasing. So the largest number is 52. Part B, uh, we have been given the five terms of a different sequence. Find an expression for the nth term of this sequence. Let's first find the difference between the two terms. To find the difference, we don't need any rule, but if you don't understand, it's always the second term minus the first term. Our second term is 19 minus 12, 7. Or you can just look at the sequence and see. 12 plus 7 is 19. 19 plus 7 is 26. The formula to find the nth term is a plus n minus 1d, where a is your first term. So let's replace our a with 12. And d is our difference, which we found is 7. Expand the bracket, 7 multiplied by n, 7n. Negative 1 multiplied by 7 is negative 7. Add the like terms together. 12 minus 7 is plus 5. So this is your expression for the nth term. There is another way to solve this. Whatever is your difference, our difference is 7. So we write it 7n. And that 7, you subtract it from the first term. Basically, we are using the formula, but in a shorter way. Sorry, uh, I wrote 5. It should be 7 here. 
12 minus 7 that will give us 5 that answer you write it next to 7 n question number 6 the diagram shows a trapezium work out the value of x we can see that these two lines are parallel if two lines are parallel and they are cut with a transversal the opposite angles equal to 180 when you add them together so we have to add the diagram shows a trapezium we can see that two lines are parallel these arrows tell us these two lines are parallel if two lines are parallel and they are cut with a line a transversal the sum of the opposite two angles will equal 180 therefore 97 minus 3x plus 69 plus 5x is equal to 180. Add the like terms together. 97 plus 69 will give us 166. Negative 3x plus 5x will give us 2x. Shift the 180, uh, 166 to the other side. The sign will become negative. So 180 minus 166 will give us 14. 2x is equal to 14. 2 times x. So the 2 when we shift to the other side will be a divide. x is equal to 14 divided by 2 which is 7. Question number 7. We have been given 234 which has been written as the product of its prime factors. And 1872 also has been written as the product of its prime factors. And we have been told that these two numbers, 234 multiplied by 1872, will give us this number here. So we have to write this as a product of its prime factors. 234 times 1872. 234 can be written as 2 multiplied by 3 over square multiplied by 13. And this will be written as 2 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 2 multiplied by 13. When you multiply, you add the powers. So wherever there is 2 first, we will add them. If there is no power written, it's to the power of 1. So 2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. We add the powers 2 plus 2, 4. Again, for 13, no powers are written. It means it is 1. So 1 plus 1, 2. Just for checking, put this in the calculator and you should get this as the answer. Question number 8 is a fraction question and it carries 4 marks. We have to solve this without using a calculator. We have to show all the working and give the answer as a fraction in its simplest form. We can use a calculator, but just show that we are not using a calculator. I hope you know how to convert a mixed number into a fraction, uh, improper fraction. We multiply the number 3 multiplied by 2. Whatever answer we get, we add the top number. So 3 multiplied by 2 is 6 plus 1, 7. Minus 7 over 8. Bracket 6 over 25. Now suppose if you really should know this, but suppose if you forgot, you can write in the calculator. There's a fraction button. Press shift and press the fraction button you will get three boxes put in the values and this will give you this answer there are many children who don't do it like that they will just write the fraction that is one over three and then they will put a two in the front this is a wrong method when you do this you're going to get two over three Okay, so now moving forward, whenever you have a plus or a minus, you need to have a common denominator. So multiply this by 8. When you multiply in the denominator, you have to multiply in the numerator also. 
and multiply this number by 3. You will have 56 minus 21 over 24. 3 times 8 and 8 times 3 will give you 24 because you have already made it into a common denominator. You can write it as one fraction times 6 over 25. Now 56 minus 21 will give us 35 over 24 multiplied by 6 over 25. After this step, multiply the numerators. Don't put everything in the calculator. First, multiply the numerator. So 35 multiplied by 6 is 210. Then, multiply the denominators. Now, show what answer you got. So even though we are using the calculator, we are just showing all the steps to show that we are not using the calculator. And fraction is very important. You need to learn it well. Question number nine, we have to factorize. When we are factorizing, let's first write a bracket. So, and there's a plus in the middle. Let's look at the alphabets first. There is A square and AB. It means there are two A here and one A here. So if we remove the common A out here, one A will remain and one B. Then the numbers are there, 21 and 28. In the calculator, write it as a fraction. You will get 3 over 4. Place that inside the bracket. But there must come a number outside also. What is that number? The top number, which is 21 divided by 3. 21 divided by 3, 7. This is your answer. I showed you in a trick way, but let's do it normally. Now, suppose you have 21 a square plus 28 ab. I showed you a is common. We write it out then we know that 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4 is 28. What is common? The 7 that we write it out. And we are left with 3 and 4 inside. Same way, we'll see what we can do here. This is a 3 mark question. You have to be a bit careful here. First, in the calculator, put 20 over 45. and you will get 4 over 9. So you have 4x square minus 9x square, y square. And what will come out? 20 divided by 4, 5. This 4 is a square number, 9 is a square number, then you have x square and y square. So we will use the difference of squares, which is a square minus b square is equal to a minus B and A plus B. So this can be written as, first you have to change the 4 to a square number. So 2x bracket square and 9 can be written as 3 square. So 3y square. This will give us 2x minus 3y and 2x plus 3y. Don't forget to write the 5 outside. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. For question number 10 onwards, please watch part 3. Thank you for watching.